This, this is a book about snubber circuits okay, for power electronics. And of course it has several chapters which go into great detail about different kinds of snubbers, snubber circuits and how they work. But we have to remember that what we're doing is we're applying the snubber to a switch. And we have to understand the switches themselves, whether they be as simple as a mechanical switch or a, some form of semiconductor switch. There are many, many types of switches that are used. Of course, today in today's world, they're primarily semiconductor switches. But what we need to do is to understand the switches themselves. So one of the chapters in the book, of which I have a draft of it sitting right here, will be about switches and the switching action itself. Okay, Not about the snubbers. In other words, this is going to talk to you about what we want from a switch. And it also brings out the important idea that if you take a given switch, let's say it's a MOSFET or an IGBT, and you combine it with a snubber, what you really have is a switch, only with greater capabilities. And this brings out the idea of this interaction between the switch and the snubber and the function that it's designed to provide in the circuit. So this particular chapter will go into considerable detail about switches themselves. Now it's not going to tell you how MOSFET works, but it will tell you how switches work in a very general way. No book on snubbers would be complete without a little bit of history. Now obviously we can't spend a lot of time studying the history of snubbers, but it's a very valuable thing to look at and to recognize just how long snubber circuits have been in use. You know, when I've gone back through the history and the papers, the earliest paper that I have found is dated 1853. I'm not putting you on. It's written by a French physicist by the name of Fizeau, and it was, of course, talking about the problems having to do with mechanical switches, particularly in the context of uh, spark generators where they had the inductor where you would interrupt the current in a primary of inductor and through a secondary create a spark on the other side. Uh, eventually this became ignition systems for example in cars. Okay, Well we know that in cars okay, the ignition system always has a capacitor across the points. All right. Well this is because of the inductive switching action. Well, it turns out that, that we can pinpoint when that was invented by M Mr. Monsieur, shall we say, Fizeau, in 1853. And then, of course, in the, when we talk about the history a little more, we, we can bring it up to date and show the transition from mechanical switches to vacuum tube and gas switches, and finally to power electronic switches, which are basically semiconductor switches, which is what the world is today. So it's kind of fun. Okay, and there will be some of this in the book, just to give you a feeling for the history, which goes back 100, almost 160 years.